and it is Nimaya, and I'm the author of the book, The Mystery of Adam. We will move on today, finally. I, I, I think I had enough to from this historical stuff. Um, but I think it's important to know it. It's important, important to know that um, our marriage today is extremely influenced um, or totally influenced by culture and by fallen creatures as fallen humankind created marriage that exists today. Um, and so we have to just really go to the bottom. We can't reform marriage anymore. Uh, it's almost like the church, um, you can't reform a church that came out of the Catholic church. You have to just say, hey, we need to start from scratch. And same with marriage. Um, I think we just totally have to start from scratch if we want a real um, Christian marriage. Again, Paul said Christian marriage um, is not something that is important. Uh, marriage is not important, he said. Uh, it is better to stay single. Um, but if you need to get married because of any sexual needs you have, well, go ahead, do that. Um, again, so now we have to look, we have to start from scratch. And if our ideas about marriage are so affected by a sinful culture and a sinful world, then we really have to look at, okay, how can we even salvage this marriage? And um, how is this marriage really uh, is supposed to look like? And um, well, in my book, I have a section on marriage and it is really interesting because I don't have separate roles for husband and wife. My roles are the same, except they are kind of um, the expression of these roles are a little bit different. Okay. Um, we know that a marriage is totally built on uh, equality. Okay. God created them in the beginning, um, equal, and Christ set all of us free. And because we are free now, we're no longer under sin, but under grace. And so under grace, uh, we go by different rules. We don't go by the rules of sin. We don't go by the, by the rules of this world. We go uh, by the rules of the kingdom. And the rules of the, king, the kingdom is submit to one another, uh, Ephesians 2.21. We are to submit to one another. We are to serve one another. Um, and that is the kingdom rule. Uh, the kingdom rule is not authority and taking advantage of another person. Um, that's not the kingdom rule. Okay. Uh, Christ clearly said, no, you know, in the kingdom, there is no uh, leader that has authority over somebody else. Um, authority corrupts. Uh, and so that should not exist in the church. Neither should it exist in a Christian marriage. Okay, so how does it look like? Um, well, my roles, this is what I came up with. Um, let's see, I need to look. Starts out with headship, and we explained headship. Okay. All right, this is what I started out with. Number one, God created the man and the woman as partners or the husband and wife as partners. According to Genesis 27 through 28, God created male and female as partners. He created both of them in the image of God and told them be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Both of them were commanded to do that, or whatever you want to call it. Both of them, God instructed to subdue the earth, um, not just the man. And the woman was the helper uh, who stayed home and raised his kids. No, both of them went out. Okay, God sent both of them out 
to subdue the earth. So therefore, that was equality. Equally, he sent them out. And so therefore, they are partners in this, um, um, in this task of subduing the earth. Um, I wrote also that partnership um, allows each person to develop into the person that they um, or God intended the, them to become. Every person is different and God has for each person a different gift. And uh, the husband and the wife have different gifts and these two different, different gifts are showing together and that makes them um, really great partners. Again, the same um, as in the church. In the church, we're partners. We both, we all have a gift, okay? We all have different gifts and the, these different gifts need to be um, put under the other person as a service, a service to the other person. It's not to be used to rule over the other person or to uh, have authority over the person, the other person. It is to serve one another. And the same um, is the case in, um, in marriage. We ought to have one, each one, husband and wife have gifts and together, and I wanna use the word compliment because it's not a bad word, people. Complimenting is not a bad word. We ought to compliment each other, okay? And that's just the way a marriage works. Next one is helper. And of course, so many people say a helper is just for the woman. No, I said it from the beginning that God created human beings. And he said, it's not good that the human being is alone. I wanna make, I wanna make that human being a helper. So he made a helper for the man and the woman. It's not good for the woman to be alone either, okay? It's not good for the man to be alone. It is good that we have partnership. It is good that we have a helper. We need a helper, okay? The woman needs a helper. The man needs a helper. And so this idea that, well, only the woman is a helper is kind of stupid, okay? Number one, people don't really look at helper as something good. They want to demean women and saying, oh, you are just a helper, which really in their mind is thinking, oh, you're just an assistant, okay? You're just an assistant. I'm the main person and you're just going to assist me. Um, well, that is not what the Bible say, okay? Uh, uh, the Bible saying that God made um, both the man and the woman a helper that um, is corresponding with um, the other person, okay? Uh, that is a, a support. We're supposed to be supporting each other. Um, now, in Ephesians, a lot of people use Ephesians, um, it describes this help like, for instance, uh, uh, the man as the help, okay? When you look at Ephesians 26 through 29, you know that the man is the helper of the woman. He is supposed to um, making her look nice and beautiful and, and support her and um, all this stuff, okay? So helper is for both. It is not just for a helper. Your woman is not just the helper for the man. But both of them are helpers. They help each other, for goodness sakes. That doesn't make sense. I don't know what makes. Um, next one is lover. Of course, we um, know that the main thing of Christian life is to love each other, okay? That is the commandment, love one another. And so we can't say that, oh, you know, only the man needs to love the woman. No, it's because that's what Ephesians says. No, both are lovers. In another spot, it actually tells women, um, to love their husband. And I don't see it right now uh, where that was. But in Titus, I believe. Yeah, Titus 2.4 informs 
um, older women to teach the younger women to love their husband. Okay. So we also know according First uh, Corinthians 13, 4 through 7, love is patient, love is kind, and so on. Okay. We both are lovers, the husband and the wife. Oh, the next one is a good one. Priest. We are both priests. And that is so many times absolutely screwed up. We all know that we are priests. Um, and we can find that in Hebrews very much. And that we are priests, a priesthood. We are called a priesthood. And because and men and women are priests, okay? So um, interesting enough that some people forget that, okay? In the New Testament, um, in the church, we are all priests, okay? All of us. Now, because people know that, some people want to make the husband the high priest. What a stupid thing that we only have one high priest. Okay, again, read Hebrew. Hebrews tells you clearly, we all priests. Christ is the only high priest. The husband is not a high priest. That would um, uh, replace Christ as the only high priest make sense so yeah we are both priests um and as priests we have access to god each one of us not just the man um and this is i it is amazing all the things that are being created to show that the woman is under the, the husband what does a, a woman do if she is she doesn't have a a, a believing husband believing husband how does she have access to to god that's ridiculous of course she has access to god okay the second one is an interesting one too and people are going to say no that's not right yeah but it is provider okay how many times have we heard um that only the man is the main provider you know i don't know there's some little food flies flying around in my house and I can see them in front of my face right now. Um, so that's why I'm kind of looking strange. But yeah, provider is the next one. And guess what? And both of them are providers. Okay, they God sent them both out um, and to be fruitful and multiply. Okay, and he told both of them to what kinds of fruits to eat and what kind of foods to eat in the garden. So both of them were sent out to provide for the family. Um, can you imagine just the husband being a, a provider? Um, you know, and you know, dare this. Oh, I am the main provider. <sighs> you know what? I don't know where that idea came from. I have absolutely no idea. But historically, when we look at it, women always had to provide. They always had to provide uh, in a gathering, in a hunting and gathering society. Women were always providing with gathering things. They were always providing with um, making clothes, uh, always providing um, in, in various different kinds of ways, uh, agricultural uh, a society and women were always providing um look at the proverbs woman how the woman was providing for that family it is unbelievable that people still um think they have to uh tell us that the husband is the man provide the main provider it, it just this haughtiness this is haughty uh, you know i'm the main provider here you know what? I only uh, can feel good if I uh, I am the main provider in the family. Yeah, and what is about the wife? Oh, she's not doing anything. Well, you know what? I dare every woman that thinks her husband is the main provider to get up um, off your little tushy and 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 help provide for the family. That's all I'm going to say. Okay, it's not just the man; it's the women as well. If they think they don't need to provide, it's pretty sad. This is, a, this is a, a partner thing, 
Okay, this is a survival, a togetherness survival, to provide for the family. And if we don't have a together togetherness thinking, then you know, I mean, how can we survive? Okay, so yeah, both of them are providers. Goodness sakes, I don't even, you know, this is, this is like common sense. If you read my book, you'll find a lot more things that show uh, um, just why both of them are providers. Um, okay, next one, educator. Um, yeah, both of them have to educate, okay? Both of them have to educate. The man is not home in our society most of the time. Who's educating? Well, obviously the woman, okay? Um, I don't know where people come up with these ideas that maybe men are the main um, people that uh, are the main teachers. It's just, and I believe that women should be teaching men too, because the women have a very, uh, very special perspective on on life that men don't have. And so, bringing these two views together is extremely important. Uh, next one is protector. Okay. Hmm. Again, I'm the main protector. Oh, yes, I understand that. Okay. I understand that men feel good when they can be the main protector. Uh, makes them definitely feel good. Okay. And I am not denying that fact. I think we need men as protectors. Uh, women need men as protectors. Definitely. Very, very clearly. But don't be so haughty about it, okay? Because I'm a protector too. We're dealing uh, with spiritual warfare, okay? That is our main, our main warfare nowadays is spiritual warfare. So who is stronger in spiritual warfare, the man or the woman? Or are they maybe equally strong in this spiritual warfare? I think they're equally strong. And sometimes women are even stronger when it comes to spiritual warfare. So who is protector um, in this whole thing? Again, I believe today still, there is a place for the protection of men, uh, for women. In this world that is still a male dominated world, and we cannot um, deny that, uh, we do need a male protector, okay? And I see that over and over again. Uh, it's not as, uh, bad anymore as it used to be um you know in the past women really were out there you know alone and if women did not have a protector they would have been uh, taken advantage of by men and that is still the case today okay ladies it's still the case today i know it um but that's because we live in in a male dominated world okay even in the church Man, look at look in the church. We don't even get it together in the church. I still even in the church have to protect protect it, which is pretty bad, uh, from uh, men that are domineering, and that are disrespectful with women. Um, so yes, I understand that. However, I still believe, and I, I still know that. We need to be both protectors. I mean, especially because, um, for instance, women, and that's in the family. We're talking about family, right? Or in the marriage. Women are at home again with the children. And who is protecting the children during the day when the, when the husband is out uh, and making the money? Okay, making the money. Uh, well, the woman is at home. So who has to protect children? The woman, okay? She is the main protector of the children. So this is, uh, this is a common thing, okay? Women and men have to protect um, and, again, support each other. Uh, so here we're seeing just a short example of common roles of men and women. Uh, I know we talked a little bit about these these roles, you know, like, oh, how about uh, bearing children? Men cannot bear children. Yeah, but they can make them, and they, since they make them, guess what? Um, they, they are responsible for raising them. 
the way it is. Okay, now if the couple decides um, a certain way to um, divide these jobs in, in marriage, that's their own um, thing. Again, in a marriage, there's different jobs, of course. Okay, um, does that mean God did God say, women, you stay home um, and let the husband go out and make money, and you stay home and you take care of the house and the children? Have you ever read that? Um, no, not really. I have not read that. And I've been doing quite a lot of research um, since I started writing my book. I have not seen that anywhere. Okay. Um, and uh, so these common roles, if we focus on these common roles and, and just say, well, men and women kind of have their own way of expressing these roles, uh, then I think we have a tendency to be much more equal and uh, and much more in oneness. Okay, one person is not trying to have authority over the other person or tell is telling the other person how they have to conduct their life. Uh, this needs to be mutual. Okay, marriage is a mutual arrangement uh, arrangement so um i will finish up for today because next week i'm gonna continue a little more but i hope this helped and hey if you find anything different contrary to what i just said again you can use ephesians but ephesians doesn't tell you too much about roles either yeah uh, it, it's very limited. It's just kind of comparing Christ and the church. And again, it just tells you that the husband is just as much uh, a servant to the woman as the woman is a servant to the husband. It's all, it, it all bottom line of Ephesians 5, 20, 21 and continuing. So again, if you find anything different, please put it in the comment section. I'm just uh, happy to answer, you know, any questions or if you have comments, I, I enjoy comments. Okay. All right. This is it for today. And I will talk to you more next time.